so when it comes to, to, to dealing with this, there's a scripture, and I don't have it in my notes, but there's a scripture in the New Testament where Paul says, beware of false brothers and false sisters, okay? We've got to be, we've got to be aware that there are times that there's somebody that's sent, but we've got to be able to discern, God, what is your plan for this person? Because there are broken, dysfunctional, messed up people that are going to come in in this next wave of revival. And if we just draw a line and go, you know what? You're a mess. Jesus can't do it. You must be a wolf. Then we're going to start throwing the revival out. Come on. Do we have the grace to deal with messed up people? Our, our, our deacon team are our key watchmen. They watch. And they come to me and say, Pastor Jane, that lady over there is a witch. I said, good, let's pray for her. Let's pray that God speaks to her, that God ministers to her, that God visits her in the service, that God sets her free. Can we get a different mentality about the way that, that discernment should function? Now, listen, this comes after years of dealing with feeling critical and judgmental. Okay? God married me to a man that's so, so merciful. How many of you know my husband? How many of you know my husband? Very merciful. How many know Bishop Hammond? So merciful. And um, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell on myself, um, we had this guy that was in our church, and this, again, was in my early days of learning how to handle discernment. And this guy was, I mean, he was a, he was divisive. He was a disruptor. I wouldn't necessarily call him a, a wolf, but he was just a very broken person and caused trouble pretty much wherever he went. And, um, and, and so he was going to leave our church. And so he sat and met with Bishop Hammond, my husband, and myself. And he had been doing a lot of talking, a lot of divisive things in the church. And so Bishop and Tom were meeting with him. I was, I was there as well. And, and so Bishop was leading the conversation. And he said, you know, well, we understand that you're leaving. But before you go, you know, I understand that you've had some issues that you've, that you, you've, had, that you've been critical, that you've talked about this or that or pastor or the worship or whatever, you know. And the guy was like, no. No, absolutely not. I, I love this church. I love this. I would never speak against this. And so they went back and forth in that kind of a conversation for a while. I am biting my lower lip to keep my mouth shut. Okay. And Bishop's like, okay, well, let's just go ahead and pray for you and bless you. And the guy stops and he turns to me and he says, well, before we pray, Pastor Jane, I want to know what you think. And I used to think that if somebody said, I want to know what you think, they actually wanted to know what I thought. I mean, that's what, you know, that's what I thought. I thought, okay, they, they want to, I said, well, I was very unfiltered back then, Okay. I said, well, I think you've been sitting here lying, I, and I said it like this, lying through your teeth to every question that Bishop's asked you. And I saw Bishop and Pastor Tom go. <sighs> How many know just because you discern it doesn't mean you say it, okay? I saw them both go. <sighs> and the guy about came, after, came at, you know, across the desk at me, you know, and he was very angry, and the whole meeting blew up, you know. <laughs> There's this little scripture that says, speak the truth in love. And my husband had to teach me, you know, babe, there's, there's nicer ways to call somebody a liar, okay? You could say, I don't think you've been entirely honest. Come on, how many know there's nicer ways? I had to learn that. I had to learn. See, I'm very black and white. I'm wearing black and white, okay? I'm very black and white. It's either black or it's white. There's not a whole lot of gray area, okay? My husband sees nothing in black and white. It's all gray. He likes to say rainbow, all the other colors of the spectrum, okay? But how many know that neither view is entirely right? And God loves to marry somebody like me to somebody like my husband. 
It says, behold the goodness and the severity of God. God likes to put one person that's goodness and the other person that's severity. How many of you are married? Wave your hand at me if this is true, okay? And, it, and if you're not married to them, God will team you with somebody that's exactly opposite from you. Is this true? And you'll spend the rest of your life trying to change that person to think like you rather than understanding the blessing and the benefit of teamwork. See, I had to learn mercy. My husband had to learn that if there's a wolf, you don't have mercy on a wolf. The way that somebody that's very black and white views life is that we almost immediately have an opinion about everything, which is not always good. And even if you're discerning, it's not always right. Nevertheless, we do have an opinion. We know what we think. We know what we feel immediately. My husband processes. He takes in a lot of information. He processes. So somebody that's like me views somebody that's like him as, (sighs) make a decision. Somebody that's like him views somebody like me as, You're really unwise. You haven't taken in all the information yet. You don't have all the information to make a decision or to make a judgment. And how many know that we can put us at odds? Rather than listening to one another and valuing the gift that's in that other person to get the full counsel of God. For example, when we go to the grocery store to buy ice cream, I walk up to the ice cream aisle, I look and say, "Mm, mint chocolate chip, that sounds good. I put it in my basket and I go and pay. My husband has to study all the brands. He has to decide which one is the best, which one is the best deal. When he narrows it down, then he usually brings home two or three because he couldn't decide on one. No, he says, isn't two or three better? Yes, two or three are better, but I'm just giving you the difference in the way that we process information because it'll inform us about how we process revelation. Because you see, people that have a mercy motivation in their their, their DNA are going to view the exact same piece of revelation differently than somebody that has a little bit more of the judgment and severity. So just be honest. How many of you tend to be more like my husband? No fair asking your spouse. How many of you tend to be more, you, you're more mercy motivated? It takes you, you like to process. You don't just make a snap judgment. Okay, all right. How many of you are more like me? Yep. Jumping to their feet, both hands in the air. Yeah, I see you. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you what that looks like from up here. I say, how many of you are more like my husband? And this is what it looks like.
before the words, how many are like me, are out of my mouth, you're jumping to your feet. Okay, now let's be honest. How many of you did not raise your hand? Raise your hand, yeah, raise your hand. It's because you're more like my husband, I just didn't give you enough time, okay? Okay. How many of you just discovered you're married to your opposite? 